Uh, and then uh, I believe this is Justice Kumsin, I think. Uh, he also was on the panel. Uh, this is Justice Amadou Tanko. Uh, he was also on the panel. And then uh, uh, this is uh, Justice Mariama Owusu, I believe. Uh, she was also on the panel. And uh, this is Justice Yao. I'll get the name. He was also on the panel. So one, two, three, four, five Supreme Court judges met and completely dismissed Dafia Mapo's matter. Okay. Soon after the dismissal of the Dafia Mapo matter, the NDC issued a statement. Let's get to the NDC statement. The NDC issued a statement uh, complaining about something. Uh, let's, 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 let's have it. Let's have the NDC statement. It's going to come on the screen in a little bit. Okay. Yes. So this is the NDC statement. It's entitled, NDC reacts to palpable judicial bias in the scheduling of political cases in the Supreme Court. And uh, it's as follows. It says, the National Democratic Congress, NDC, has become aware of the decision by the Chief Justice of Ghana to list the case of Roxanne Nelson, H.A.K. Dafiamako, versus the Speaker of Parliament and the Attorney General for hearing on Wednesday, 27th March 2024. The NDC is intrigued by the listing of the Dafiamako case for hearing ahead of the case of Richard De La Sky versus Parliament of Ghana and the Attorney General. It is interesting to note, the statement says, that Richard Delasky filed his writ of summons in the Supreme Court challenging the constitutionality of the Sexual Rights and Family, Family Values Bill 2024 on the 5th of March. This was almost two weeks clear before Roxanne Dafiamapo filed his writ of summons 2024 challenging the constitutionality of the latest ministerial nomination by the President. Given the recent political deadlock that these two legal suits have created between the executive arm and the legislative arm of government, one would have expected that the date of the filing of the cases would have informed the timing of the hearing by the apex court. Yet, for some strange reasons, the statement says, the Honorable Roxanne Dafiamapo, uh, which was last in time to be filed, has been hurriedly listed for hearing tomorrow. Whilst that of Richard Delasky, which predated the Dafiamapo case by two weeks, has not been listed for hearing at all. This is in spite of the fact that no application for abridgment of time has been filed by any of the parties in the Dafia Mapo case. It's quite apparent that this is a ploy by the Chief Justice to fast track the determination of the suit by the Honorable Roxanne Dafia. They call it a ploy. So it's not very, it's, it's language that alleges too much against the Chief Justice. But that's what they say. So this is a ploy by the Chief Justice to fast track the determination of the suit. Uh, filed by Roxanne Dafia Mapo, while the determination of the Richard De La Caya Sky suit is deliberately and unduly delayed to enable the president to shelve the crucial sexual rights and family values bill that has been passed by parliament. Even more bizarre is the fact that the case filed by the NDC members of parliament challenging the constitutionality of the passage of the electronic transfer e-levy bill as far back as 2022 has not been listed for hearing. The arbitrary exercise of administrative indiscretion by the Chief Justice, particularly in the shelling of cases in the Supreme Court, goes to fortify the high perception of bias on the part of the judiciary. Such judicial manipulations go to confirm the growing public perception that the current Chief Justice is a blind accomplice, is a blind accomplice and a betor of the misrule of the despotic Akufuado. Wow. These are very, very, very harsh words. That the Chief Justice is an abettor. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> While the Constitution of Ghana vests discretionary power in the Chief Justice in the discharge of her administrative duties over the judiciary, it is important that such discretionary powers are not exercised arbitrarily, capriciously, and whimsically. Judicial independence must mean exactly that. At no point should the judiciary act in a manner that lends itself to the grounded belief that it is willing to aid in an overbearing executive in a standoff with the legislature. Chief Justice must appreciate blah, 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 the list of cases. Okay, so all of that is published by the NDC and is signed by Fiavi Fifi Kwiti. Now let's come, and do, let's come and do some analysis. Now let's come and do some analysis. Okay, Roxanne Dafiamba, forgive me the photograph again. Mr. Roxanne Dafiamba has filed a suit in court. When people file a suit, you will assume that they, they are ready for the action. They want to go to court to find out something. So he's filed a suit in court. His suit is being heard. 
He says, why are you hearing my suits before you hear another person who's filed? You have filed a rating court. You have principal interest in it. Unless, of course, he didn't have any interest and he was just playing, joking, or doing some political gymnastics or something like that. But otherwise, you have filed a matter in court. You filed a matter. The court says that the matter that you filed, I'm hearing it. You say, no, I don't want your court to hear it. I want the court to hear it in the last guy's own because he filed it before my own. And then in the statement, you concede that the Lord Chief Justice has the right at a, at a discretion to file cases, to, to, to impanel judges to conduct cases. The Attorney General, who felt that this one that fell upon matter, which is stopping ministers from doing their work, he's the Minister for Justice and Article 88. This thing that is going to stop ministers from doing their work, it's not correct. So he took steps to get the Supreme Court to now deal with it. Okay, so the controversy now is what steps did the Attorney General take? Was it legal? Was it capricious? What was it? Okay, so let's go to the uh, next one. The application. The Attorney General wrote a letter. Now, the NDC lawyers in their statement talk about abridgment of time, which is a legal process. Now, let's explain the difference between the letter that is written and the abridgment of time. Abridgment of time occurs, and every lawyer knows that. Dominic Ayini must know that. And uh, other lawyers must know that. The abridgment of time occurs when there is a date on the document. Paul Adomotri versus Dafia uh, Makbo. Date, 11th August. I have 11th August on the date. I don't like 11th August, so I bring an application to bring the time forward. That's one process. The Attorney General has repeatedly said in all the interviews that that is not the process that he succumbed himself to. That is not the process that he was occasioning. The Attorney General was not occasioning a process of abridgment of time. He has said it over and over and over and over again that the NDC lawyers have completely misunderstood it or perhaps are unaware of another way in which you can bring the case forward, especially in circumstances where there's actually no date fixed. In circumstances where there's no date at all fixed, this is what you do. This is what you do. You write a letter. Let's look at the letter that he wrote. Now, um, this letter is written on the 25th of March, 2024, and it's entitled Application for Expeditious Hearing. Roxon Dafia Makpo versus Speaker of Parliament, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so let's look at the letter. It's Office of the Attorney General and, admin, and the Ministry of Justice. Her Ladyship, the Chief Justice, is, is writing, uh, the, the Attorney General is writing to the Chief Justice. This application, okay, what does it say? Respectfully, the Attorney General in the, is the second defendant in the above-mentioned suit, pending on the, uh, the Supreme Court. The plaintiff, a citizen of Ghana, invoked the original jurisdiction of the Supreme Court on 18th. Okay, please find attach a copy of the writ. Let's move on. On 21st March, the plaintiff filed an application for an order of interlocutory injunction to restrain the Speaker of Parliament from proceeding with the vetting and approval of the names of nominees of the President submitted to Parliament until the requirement that the Minister of State shall be appointed by the President with the prior approval of Parliament is satisfied in respect of Honorable Henry Corte, Honorable Asensu Boache, Honorable Kojo Ponkroma, Honorable Ambrose Derry, Honorable Abdullah Abanga, who have been purportedly reassigned new, minist new ministerial and deputy ministerial offices. Please find a copy attached. This is the claim of Dafia Makpo. He actually names the ministers against whom he's filing these rates that they cannot be reassigned without subjecting themselves to another vetting because the president said they are terminated. Let's move on. Respectfully, the Attorney General says, it is pertinent to indicate that the substance of the above-mentioned suit is a challenge to the power of the president to relieve ministers serving in his government of their portfolios and reassign them to different ministries. It has no bearing on the approval of persons newly nominated by the president as ministers and deputy ministers and who have been duly presented to Parliament for approval in accordance with Article 78.1 and 79.1 of the Constitution. So, what, what the Attorney General is saying is that the fair approach rate is challenging those ministers who are being reassigned and therefore should not go for vetting. That has been the practice. You are moving from Ministry of Interior to Ministry of Defense. You don't go for vetting. Announcement is made and then you move on. The fair approach is saying that given the current circumstances, that should not be. So, he names the ministers. Then the speaker says that, oh, there's an injunction against those ministers. So, in fact, those who have been vetted, I will not proceed. This is what Attorney General is saying. Let's move on and, and get it. 
Nonetheless, the pendency of this suit was advanced, that's what I was just saying, was advanced by the Speaker of Parliament as a basis for the suspension of the approval processes of persons nominated by the President as ministers and deputy ministers who have been duly presented to Parliament for prior approval. Whilst recognizing your absolute prerogative in matters bordering on the impaling of a court to adjudicate on disputes, we humbly indicate that, this is Attorney General, it is in the overarching interest of the nation for the expeditious hearing of the plaintiff's application for an order of interlocutory injunction to restrain the Speaker of Parliament. I tell you, I'm saying that this matter has to be heard because it is in the interest of the nation. In the circumstances, the Attorney General says, we respectfully pray your ladyship to exercise your powers under the Constitution and the Court Act, Act 459, to empanel the Supreme Court to hear the plaintiff's application for interlocutory injunction as expeditiously as possible. We thank you in anticipation of your cooperation and the letter is signed by Godfrey Abu Adami. This is the problem. This is the letter that's creating the problem. The Attorney General felt that, look, this matter, I need it to be heard quickly. The nation needs it. So he applies to the court and says, my Lord Chief Justice, let's hear the matter. If you want Richard Della Sky matter to be heard, please apply to the court. What, what kind of... I don't, I don't understand it. The Attorney General wants the defense. Why should the Attorney General also want Richard Sky's matter to be heard? Why should the Attorney General want Paul Adumachi's matter to be heard? Why should the Attorney General want uh, Obeche Bilamte's matter to be heard? The Attorney General gives the Chief Justice reasons why he thinks that this is important. He writes a letter to the CJ that, can you hear this quickly, please? Okay, we are going to demonstrate to you that this process that has been taken by Attorney General in the person of Godfrey Debo Adame, the same process, the same Godfrey Debo Adame, not as Attorney General, sitting in his office at Akufado Prempe and Co., used the same process in 2012 in writing a letter to the Chief Justice asking the CJ to get an application head quickly. It's practice of the law. It is distinguished barristers who know these things. The very distinguished barristers, they know these things. So they are talking about Attorney General writing a letter now because the Attorney General is manipulating it. I'm going to show you that in 2012, he wrote the same letter. Let's go to that one. Let's go to that one. Please put that one on very quickly. 2012. Please, please, please. Okay. So this 2012, Akufuado and Co. Her Ladyship, the Chief Justice. This was Georgina Wood. Date is 27th August. 2012 the letter is written in 27th august 2012 and i'll show you that they're exactly the same thing okay our reference okay dear madam application for expeditious hearing suit number so electoral commission versus rafford france okay we asked for the plaintiff in the above mentioned suit the plaintiff blah 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 a declaration so he says everything that they are looking for the person is suing electoral commission and uh, dominic Aini was part of this process i've been told Okay, service of the risk of summons and statements of court was promptly effected, blah, blah, blah. Okay, now this is the important one. Respectfully, your ladyship, he says, it is accurate to say that in, in the circumstances, the suit is ripe for hearing. The hearing has, however, been hindered by the statutory legal vacation of the courts of Ghana. Whilst recognizing the absolute imperative for a legal vacation by the superior courts of judicature, we wish to respectfully indicate that the suit, the subject matter of this letter, is one with overwhelming public interest to the extent that the outcome of the same will affect the electoral process in the Republic of Ghana this year. The plaintiff in filing his action was motivated by a duty imposed on all Ghanaians to uphold and defend the constitution, blah, blah, blah. So, it is in the light of this that we respectfully pray your ladyship Georgina Wood, not stuck on Georgina Wood, to exercise your powers under Rule 1 of Supreme Court Rules 1996, CR 16, to empanel the Supreme Court to hear the merits of the plaintiff's action in the legal vacation. Respectfully, Rule 1 of CR 16 provides, and then he quotes it, our humble prayer to you has been made necessary by the fact that a failure to do so will not only render the plaintiff's action moot or negatory, but will also encourage further unconstitutional conduct on the part of the first defendant, the Electoral Commission. Then he goes on, in view of all the above, we respectfully pray you to exercise your powers under Rule 1 of C-116 to empanel a court to hear the merits of plaintiff's action. We thank you in anticipation of a rapid response. So viewers, this is what happens when you want to do the research. 
when we set out to look at this matter, we were asking, okay, the process of the letter is a complicated matter. Is there some history to it? Does anybody have an Has that process been used before? And then they provide her with the letter. And Godfrey Dami said, oh yeah, I've done, this. I've done this so many times and many lawyers in my law firm were doing it. How come then these people don't understand it? They think this is abridgment of time. This has nothing to do with abridgment of time. In this particular instance, the course were on vacation. So there's no dates. The course are on vacation. And Godfrey Dami writes to the chief justice as a private lawyer. 2012, Marietta Brew. Was it Marietta Brew? Must have been Martin Amidu. Martin Amidu was attorney general in 2012. I'm sure it was. Yes, the mill's time. Martin Amidu or, or Benjamin Kumbo, one of them was attorney general. Godfrey Dami was not attorney general in 2012. But then he rewrote this letter to the chief justice. And the date is here. 27th August. It's the same process. Writing a letter. He doesn't copy that letter to the parties. It's not abridgment of time. I don't understand why that became a problem. It is not abridgment of time. Can you explain to them? I understand that this morning, good morning, Ghana, Samiji, this finally said, it's not abridgment of time. Yesterday, Edujitamaklu, every day, and the attorney general pointed out that he's ignorant. Very, very ignorant, as the attorney general said. That the guy is ignorant. Mr. Tamaklu was on radio yesterday for minutes. Abridgment of time. But whether the... He even compelled the attorney general to say that when I was teaching you in 2012, maybe you were not listening. Why you do? Is it because of politics we even lose our professional lenses? It is not abridgment of time. It is a letter to the chief justice when you think you can make a case for a matter to be heard early when there's no date for it. When there's a date for it, you do abridgment of time. It's not very complicated. Oh, these are lawyers. It's, it's not complicated. Let's, let's do the politics with high standards. Let's argue. Let's fight. Let's let's judge or let's discuss, but not let's not show crass ignorance and use our ignorance to make another person look like he's bad. The children call it gaslighting. The teenagers they call it gaslighting. Why are you doing that? You are ignorant. You you are ignorant. You could, you don't understand it. The man is teaching you that this is a process. I've done it so many times. Is it because they as barristers they don't? I don't know. But there's a matter. The whole matter about Atenja has written a letter here. This is it. This is the same letter he wrote in 2012. 2012. So there's a process where lawyers can write to the chief justice. And she would oblige. This one was obliged him. He was obliged. They obliged. So, where's the matter? Where's the point? Should we even go on about the chief justice's right to impanel? I don't think we even should go on about that. But this is, this is the settling. This settles it. This is the matter. The NBC said, Godfrey Dami has written a letter to the Chief Justice. It is illegal. It, it is abuse of process. It's th- that, that letter is part of the process. And the, the said Godfrey Dami was doing this in private practice 2012. Today, we hear that the Speaker has also written to the Chief Justice. We will not discuss that one. On Tuesday, we'll come and look at that. We hear that the Speaker has written. The Speaker has written to the Chief Justice. Asking the chief justice for the matter, which is Kai matter to be heard. Is that not the same process? Is that not the same process? You have to write and show the basis on which you are writing. And a lawyer doesn't know this and foisters his ignorance on the general public. And when he is corrected on radio, he says that Tony John is arrogant. I've never heard some before. I was listening to Joe FM yesterday. And I, I should be calling Ivan Mensah because I don't understand why Ivan Mensah allowed the guy to say Attorney General is arrogant when it is his ignorance that had been pointed out. If you listen to the interview, I've listened to it even today twice. Mr. Tomaklo's ignorance was pointed out. And then he says, when you point out his ignorance, when he was told that it's not a bridgement of time, it's a letter. Then he said, why didn't you copy the letter to the other parties? Then he was told that it's not a judicial process. So we don't copy the other parties. It is the, seven, the, the, the service of the hearing notice. That's a judicial process. So we don't copy. Then he shifts and says that the attorney general is arrogant. What does it mean? Anyway, viewers, you can make what you want of it. Send your text message to Good Evening Ghana official. So that's our story. We, do, we just take a short break right now. When we come back, we are switching straight to the Abel Damina interview. But this is the story. This is a call to you. The dreamers. The ones that see no boundaries. Dreamers 
take a chance The explorers that chart their own path Unlock the vibes, connect the energy The ones that dare to challenge the status quo Get connected, feel the When others try to think outside the box You wonder, what box? Catch the wave, enjoy the ride To the architects of their journeys Every connection is an opportunity to explore every experience. This is your call to adventure. Your journey begins here. Be bold. Be daring. Be free. Connecting passions. Connecting dreams. Connecting ambitions. Telesel. Connecting energies. It's good to stay strong together. It's good to share nutritious meals cooked with Phytol, a vitamin A fortified oil. Phytol, you deserve a life of goodness. This advert is FDA approved. Hey, my girl, what's up? How far with your intentions? To be honest, I'm so nervous about starting this new world on Monday. Oh, please. I know you'll be great at it. You should be worried about what benefits they have. Example, do they have health insurance? I doubt they will have that for instance. But no shaking. I have NHIs already. Actually, I'm still not lying. Ting, ting, ting. Hey, now. Look at you. What are you going to do in your office when you can just download your app? You can just have one NHIs membership. Yes, my people. You heard right. You can now download and register your membership on my NHIS app. No long queues or tedious paperwork. All you need is your Ghana card to register for yourself and for others. Once you register, you get a new digital NHIS card on your phone. My NHIS app gives you access to credentialed health facilities and services across the country. NHIS covers over 95% of disease conditions in Ghana. Access to healthcare just got easier. Now let me sign up quickly. Miss Seth, I'm starting work next month. Welcome to elbowthwest.com We are back bringing you the latest lineup from Betway. The Omni. Betway starts strong with your front two with free play Friday and swipe bet. I'm food now. In the middle, you've got all the control with cash out and build a bet. Plus, with win boost, you can boost your sports bet. At the back, they have smart picks and the partial daily jackpot. You always get way more with Betway. And you want to see. Subscribers have been vetted and approved by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. Bet responsibly. No under 18. Terms and conditions apply. Betway. Get way more. In today's modern world, stairs are a challenge, especially for our elderly and those with health concerns. Navigating them can be difficult and even dangerous, but there's a safer way to move vertically. Lifts and Elevators Limited Company, your answer to a more accessible and secure vertical transportation. Our elevators and escalators, including top-of-the-line pneumatic vacuum elevators, Fuji elevators and escalators, offer a safer and more convenient alternative, eliminating the risks of stairs and enhancing accessibility for homes, businesses, and hospitals. Choose safety and convenience with lifts and elevators limited company. Elevate your spaces today. For more information, visit our website at www.elevatorsgh.org or call now on 0200-535-515. Lifts and Elevators Limited Company, the elevator people. Well, it's really so nice. this is our studio where we produce Good Evening Ghana from. If I come here with okay. you, this is uh, our library, a small library. Looks nice. Uh, where the social media editors sit. Okay. So we have uh, books from all over, you know. Wow. 
uh, we don't have your photograph here, but we we'll added because yeah. Nelson Mandela is here. I can see. Miriam Akiba, and uh, this see. is uh, Fela Kuti, yes, the famous Fela, Nigerian yeah. Afrobeat. I can see. Uh, this is uh, Mrs. Johnson Selif, yes, uh, who is former Liberian president. Yes. John Kufo is a very Dana. distinguished president. Yeah. Barack Obama, Kwame yeah. Nkrumah, okay, and uh, JB Dan Kwanana Kufo, our current president. Former American President Trump, Trump and current American President yeah, Joe Biden. Biden. My favorite sportsman of all time, Muhammad Ali. Yeah. Yeah, they are wow. all, all there. So this is where they sit. And then I, Beautiful. I Beautiful. would usually sit in this blue chair. Okay. And I have positioned the two presidential candidates for this year's elections in Ghana behind me. Wow. On the left is the former President John Dramani Mahama. Okay. And then on the right is the Vice President Al Haji Mumuni Baumia. Wow. The two of them are running for president. One of them will win. Wow. Yes. Uh, never mind the others. One of them. Okay. So, it's so because you were coming, uh, okay. this is a very political program. Okay. And therefore, it's a political desk. I said, if uh, Osofu is coming, let's shift the studio here. Okay. So that uh, we have a ground that is not politically uh, decorated. This beautiful. is neutral. Really beautiful. And uh, we can dedicate it to Christ. Welcome again, Dr. Damina. This is Easter is here with us. Thank you. And Easter is um, an important epochal occurrence. In the history of Christianity. In fact, without Easter, there is no Pentecost. Yep. And without Easter, there's no Christianity. Yep. Without Easter, there's no resurrection. Right. What, how should Christians look at the essence of Easter? That Christ came to die for my sins and what else? Well, the whole essence of Easter is predicated on the fact that man sinned and man didn't have the wherewithal to help himself from his sins. Mm -hmm. Man had everything. He had the knowledge to invent, innovate, create, but man didn't have the resources to cure the problem of sin. So God became a man in the person of Jesus Christ to die on behalf of man as a substitute. All right, so Jesus died on our behalf, was buried, and on the third day he rose triumphantly, defeating sin, death, and the grave. So every year, Christians all over the world and non-Christians alike stand still at the time of Easter to recognize that there was a time when the Savior of this world came into this world, died, rose again, and the Christian faith is predicated on those events, which begins with the incarnation where God became a man. The book of Isaiah says his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So Jesus is Mighty God. Jesus is Everlasting Father. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Which means, therefore, that the birth of Christ, which we call a birth, was actually an incarnation, a miracle. Because Mary said to the angel, how can these things be seen? I know not a man. So there was no, no will of man involved because John 1, 12 and 13 says, that Jesus was made not of the will of man, nor of flesh, nor of blood, but of God. So that's where the best way theologically to look at it is what we call the incarnation, a miracle, a fusion of deity into humanity for the purpose of giving legality to the work of redemption. Man sinned, man died to save man from sin. That's the whole concept of the Easter. So it begins with the incarnation, the descent of God into humanity, the death of Jesus, his burial, and his resurrection, and consequently his ascension to the right hand of majesty on high. That's why that event sets the tone. It sets the foundation for all of Christian belief, all of Christian pra practice, and guarantees eternity with God. How did Christianity occur? The word Christianity. Peter, the apostle, never called himself a Christian. Paul, the apostle, never called himself a Christian. Jesus Christ didn't call himself a Christian, but Jacob, Isaac, they called themselves Jews, and that was the essence of their worship. Being a Jew denoted a culture where you worship the God of Abraham, Jacob, Isaac, and Isaac. And Jacob. Yep. So they gave a designation to who they are. Yep. Where did Christianity come from, the word Christianity? Well, the word Christianity came from the teaching ministry of Brother Paul in Antioch. After teaching Christ to those disciples of his over a period of time, because the gospel of Christ is, is, is transformative. And as they began to focus on that message of Christ's death, his burial, his resurrection, a transformation began to happen in their lives. Where those who observed this transformation could identify the transformation to what they saw in Christ. So they decided to call them Christians. 
Christ-like. That's where Christianity came from, out of Paul's teaching ministry of the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Christianity is an English word, is it? It's a, it's a, it's a Greek word. Christianity. It comes from Greek. It's a Greek word? Yep. The word Christ is Greek? Yes, Christos is Greek. But Christianity appeared to have been amplified by Rome, the Roman Empire. They spoke Latin, didn't they? Yes, they did. So did they, as Latin speakers, at the powerful political empire, adopt a Greek terminology? Yes, they did. You know, when the Bible was written, English was not in existence at all. Mm -hmm. Because English is just about 800 years or thereabout. So when Christianity, I mean, when the Bible was written, there was no English language. That's why it's a translation from the Greek and the Hebrew, and of course the Latin Vulgate, which includes, you know, the Aramaic, which is broken Greek, which Jesus spoke. So, yeah, it's a Greek word. It's a Greek word. The people who live in Rome, who are not Christians, they look at Christianity as a political empire situated in the Vatican in Rome. And it has been there for 2,000 years. And the Roman Empire sort of wrought the Christian philosophy and the religion. And as they say, imposed it on the rest of the world, sometimes through war. How do you relate to the statement that if a person lives in Rome, is not a Christian, and you tell him, he said, this Christianity is nothing spiritual. It's a political empire sitting at the Vatican. He can point this to you. That this is the Vatican. This is the heart of Christianity. This is where Christianity is. This is the citadel of it. It's not any spiritual religion. It's a political authority of Rome. Well, again, remember also when Jesus was on earth, there were the Jews, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, the, 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 you know, the teachers of the law. They were part of the religion called Christianity. Christianity as a den and Jesus brought a teaching that differed from what they were teaching the religious leaders of their day the Somebody Judaism is, leaders the leaders of Judaism yes Judaism mm -hmm. leaders mm -hmm. because they were actually the leaders of the synagogue yes yes and they constituted the authority of the day but they were not Christians they were Judaism people yes that's why I said the Christianity of their day I'm just using but they that call word. it Judaism loosely yeah it's, it's, it's still, called, it's still Judaism is still today. on till yeah, today so that's what because they it's a religion that is based on the worship of the law of Moses mm -hmm. and the worship by using you know the teachings of Moses in the law you know as as as, as they were relating with God all right, but when Jesus showed up, Jesus brought the teachings that differed from their own teachings. That's why the Bible says, from whence has this man this wisdom that he spoke with such authority, not as the scribes and the Pharisees, which means that even in Jesus' time, there was religion, Judaism and all of that, just like you have Rome today. Mm -hmm. All right, but it didn't interfere with the emphasis of the gospel of Christ. When we talk about Christianity today, the modern Christianity, we sometimes push the law aside and we often say we are not under the law is that correct we're not under the law we're not under the law yep we're not okay under hold it there the bible said this word of the law shall not depart from your mouth yep. you shall meditate on it day and night yep. then will you make your way prosperous yep. and have good success i believe it's in exodus somewhere no, it's in joshua chapter 1 verse yes. 8 this word of the law this book of the this law. book of the law what law is it is that okay so remember moses is dead joshua takes over from moses Moses has laid down laws that govern Israel on their way to the promised land. Remember, they came out of Egypt. Moses left them halfway. Mm -hmm. And when Moses was about to die, in Numbers 27, verse 16 and 17, Moses said, let the Lord God, the God of all flesh, set a man over a congregation that will lead Israel to the promised land. So God asked Mo Moses to, to recommend, and Moses recommended Joshua. So Moses is dead. Joshua takes over. But before Joshua takes over, Moses instructs Joshua, there's a book of the law that will not depart out of your mouth if you're going to succeed in leading them to the promised land. So that statement was not made to you. It was made to Joshua specifically in that context that he will need the book of the law, which is like you're going to pastor these people. You will need the law of God in your mouth to feed them and pastor them to the promised land. Oh, so that word is only for Joshua. It was for Joshua. Not for us. Well, there are lessons to learn because the book of Romans chapter 15 verse 4 says, what things soever were said aforetime, they were written for our learning. So there are things to learn in it. What are the things to learn? Number one, that if you meditate the scriptures, you meditate the word of God, the word of God will make you prosper in your relationship with God and in how you live upon the face of the earth. And there's a corroboration to that. 
David now will say in Psalm 1 verse 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitted in the seat of discomfort. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in the law of the Lord does he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. His leaf also shall not wither, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So the lesson there is that if you meditate God's word and spend time meditating and pondering, the word of God will infiltrate your, your subconscious infiltrate your mind and order your mind to think in line with God's thought and God's thoughts is God's wisdom so you begin to navigate your way through life using the wisdom of God but that's bringing us back to the controversial points you just said navigate your way through life using the wisdom of God yes so I'm a businessman yes navigate my way through my business life yes using the word of God I become prosperous yes another person can be prosperous yes. he doesn't use Jesus yes he may use something else yes because the devil has power to make wealth isn't it that's what the Bible said it said the Lord your God giveth you power to make wealth well, he added again, no that context the devil told Jesus that I can give all this to you well again that context has to be explained again when he says thou shall remember the Lord thy God in Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 that it is he that giveth the power to make wealth mm -hmm. he was speaking to Israel on their way from Egypt to the promised land mm -hmm. that you shall remember when God brought you out of Egypt he gave you clothes you didn't buy he gave you shoes you never bought you were hungry you had money but you couldn't buy food he gave you manna you shall remember that through your journey from Egypt to the promised land God gave you power to make wealth to prosper in the land that's what Joshua I mean, was telling the children. It's not for us. It's not for us. It, it's a context. How do we make wealth then? We make wealth by industry. We make wealth by business. We don't, we don't need to obtain power from God to make wealth. God already gave every human being power. Your brain, you went to school, you studied. That's you what the power is about. That's what the power is about. Today. So when I pray, should I pray for my business? Oh, sure. You pray for your business. Then because you're a child of God, the Holy Spirit gives you direction. He gives you, you know, wisdom. He gives you ideas, concepts. But with all of that, you still need skills developed in school. You need all of that to be able to navigate. What you are saying is that if you have not trained as a lawyer, yes, there's no amount of law the Holy Spirit can teach you there's and it will work. The Holy not. Spirit can teach law, but you have to first be a lawyer to be qualified as a lawyer. Is that what you're saying? Yes. So that you set the foundation for the support of the Holy Spirit to come upon it. Well, even with that, the Holy Spirit is limited to your, to your brain power. He cannot make you do what your brain does. But do. he can give you more information. Well, the Once you're already a doctor, the information can give the you more Holy information. Spirit will give you is not in the law profession. It will be in giving you direction on when to speak, when not to speak, where to go, where not to go, when to get involved, when not to get involved. But when he gives you all of that direction, your expertise in law will be required to make you excel in that pursuit. Can he remind you of Article 19 if you needed it in court and you had forgotten? Can the Holy Spirit tell you that? Check Article. Can, some, can you feel a sense of something that says, check Article 19? Again. And then you open the court article and say, yes. That's again, what that's, that's part of the leading of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. He will lead you. He will guide you. He will remind you things you have forgotten, but there are things you already know. That's what I'm saying. You've yes. read it before in school, but yes. you've forgotten. Yes. Or you have not noticed that it is relevant for the point you are making now. Yes. And then you can be reminded can that check out to remembrance. Yes, he can remind you things. Then you make money thereby. Yes, you make money. So Holy Spirit has helped you to make So money. again, remember in our last interview, we said, yes, the Holy Spirit will give you direction and leading and help you because you're a child of God. But that is not why you succeeded. You succeeded because you had the required skill, you had the required equipment with which to succeed. So if I'm a pastor and I'm a teaching my congregation and I come to the church and I say that, separate the architects sit here, the lawyers sit here, the doctors sit here, the rest of you go to the other auditorium, let me talk to this group of people. And I tell them that you are an architect, you're a lawyer, a doctor, you're sitting in this church. You start your work without prayer. If you're an architect and you have a project, do five days fasting before you start. Hear from the Spirit before you start. And those of you who hear from the Spirit, come and give a testimony. Is that a prosperity gospel? Well, that's not a prosperity gospel. It's not. That's but, like but giving, I'm urging them like to bringing, use the Bible to that, make money. Yes, that's like bringing, come and testify. That's like, and you will need that prayer for every other area of your life. I agree. Exactly. So that's like bringing the fundamental principles of the Christian life to bear. For those architects, you know, uh, lawyers, mm -hmm. to know that as a child of God, whether you are going to the court of law or not, every day, you've got to pray and fellowship with God. You've got to speak to God. Basic principles of the Christian life. And then I add that when you pray and you succeed, 
give God a dangerous offering. <laughs> The moment you put that, you've messed up the entire discourse. Why? Why do you have to give God a dangerous offering? Because you acknowledge that it is the prayer and the five days work that gave you a sterling qualities, reminded you of all your architectural principles, and you're able to deliver it. So give God a dangerous offering. As long as the dangerous offering is coming as thanksgiving. Yes, it is. Oh, sure. Why not? But that's, that, that's the point. It's thanksgiving. But yes. it has to be a dangerous one. Well, not, some, not some $200. <laughs> heavy. Something well, heavy. But, but the truth of the matter is, Jesus said, whoever is forgiving much love it more if the person truly realizes that it is god that helped him you know to to to, to succeed in life he wouldn't need to be motivated to do that he would do it naturally yeah but sometimes you have to talk to them sometimes you have to teach them yeah. you have to show them their responsibilities but ultimately they have to make the decision of what they want to give if and the bible to... says if a man give it according to what he has it is acceptable if i have three pastors and i see one of the pastors is very adept at talking to these professionals and, and reminding them to come and give an offering. And then I give him a role in the pastoral ministry. This guy will be responsible for professionals. Every Wednesday he's going to talk to them. Am I diverting the uh, salvation message? Am I well, diluting it? Well, for a child of God who has the nature of God in him, the nature of God is given. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You already have that nature in you. You don't need too much uh, mobilization too much no 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 you just need to come into your realities the gospel of christ will stir up those deposits of god in the believer and they will flow naturally as he begins to grow in the knowledge of christ interesting yep so uh the last time we spoke a uh, few things came out especially the prosperity gospel we'll get to that in a minute but i was just looking at the video this morning that was comparing uh, a testimony or a message that you gave compared it to two other pastors uh, with the with, with the uh, benefit of your indulgence i can mention their names i'm referring to bishop oyedipo and uh, uh, pastor adeboy the subject matter was about the salvation and whether or not a christian can lose his salvation after he has obtained salvation your view was different from theirs i come to that when can it be said that i have obtained salvation what happens is it the go to church raise up your hand those of you are the back or the, how do i know that uh, because when i was growing up in school there were some people who said something interesting they said that they didn't need to be born again because they were born into it hmm. he was born by a pentecost pastor from age two he's been in the church age six is in the church it's age is in the church 17 he's singing in the church the 20 what, what is this? God says, raise your hand. So anytime that altar call, as we called it, yeah. the altar call came, he was beyond it. So he didn't stand up because he's already in. When does one have salvation? How do you know? Well, first of all, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 10 from verse 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. It says, say not in your heart, who shall go up to heaven to bring Christ down? Or who shall go to the grave to raise Christ from the dead? He says, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in your heart and in your mouth. That's the word of faith which we preach. That if you shall believe in your heart the Lord Jesus and confess with your mouth that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So salvation is predicated on the message. When the gospel, and Brother Paul tells us what the gospel is. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 and 4. From verse 1, he started by saying, The gospel which I receive, I've delivered unto you. Verse 3, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures then he said in verse 14 if christ be not risen he says then our gospel is vain in verse 17 he says if christ is not risen from the dead then you are deceived you are still in your sins which means salvation will be predicated upon the message and understanding of the message of his death burial and resurrection if that message has not been clearly communicated, even if a man answered the altar call, that man is not saved. It has to be the fact that he died as a substitute on your behalf. He was buried and on the third day he rose again. Understanding that message, even without coming to the altar, just that understanding within microseconds, you get saved. Hmm. Let me give you an example. When I was in secondary school, there were a lot of the young boys who they didn't want to associate with Christianity. And we call them unbelievers. And uh, there was a big distinction in my boarding school between believers and unbelievers. So as a junior, one of the seniors called me. He was laughing at me. 
He said, why do you both call us unbelievers? I want to know. And I said, because you don't believe in the resurrection of Christ. He said, just that. I said, oh, yeah. He said, oh, but I believe. So I was stunned. I was 13 years old. He was about 17. He said, I believe. That's all. That's why you call us unbelievers. That we don't believe. I believe. Then I was, he said, so am I a believer? Because I believe. Mm -mm. I said, well, I don't know. He started celebrating. I'm a believer. Now I've become a believer no. because I believe. No. Why do we call them unbelievers? They're called unbelievers because the message is preached. They didn't understand the message. They didn't receive the message. So nothing happened in their hearts. How do we know that? Well, because it's happening in the hearts. Well, you will know that because once a man is truly saved, something happens. Something happens. First of all, he himself is, is persuaded about it. Secondly, he begins to bring fruits of salvation. There will be fruits to eat. It's not just mouth. There will be fruits. Because if it's just mouth, the Bible says, Satan believes that there is God and he trembles. So Satan believes, but he's not saved. So that somebody says, I believe that Jesus is, he died. It's not enough. It, you have to receive the entire message, the complete message, in your heart. And then believe it in your heart. Then the miracle happens right in the heart of it. But how do we ascertain it? Shakespeare said there's no art to find the mind's construction in the face. How, this is so mental, so internal, so intangible. The man to whom that miracle happened in his heart will know it. Yes, I will know and, it. And that's what happened. I will know it. And but that's how would you know that but I'm saved? I will know that eventually because the fruit of salvation, which begins with the joy of salvation, the peace of God, all of that is what will lead into the transformation of your life. And you can see the fruit, love, joy, peace, gentleness, meekness, temperance. All of those are fruits associated with salvation. Once a man receives salvation, those fruits will gradually begin to find expression. And that's how we will get to know that this man is truly saved. If you have two households, a man and a wife, a man and a wife in two different households, one of them is Christian, goes to church, so we assume that he's saved. The other one is not, because on Sundays they don't go to church. They are sitting outside eating and waiting to watch football. But you find that the one who is supposed to be saved does not express the salvation manifestations, joy, peace, love. The other one does. If you're looking at a situation like that, and you can find many, what do we say? Who is saved and who is not saved? Well, again, remember salvation is a birth into Christ. You are born again. All right, Jesus said to Nicodemus, Nicodemus said to Jesus, what, what, you know, he says, Rabbi, you're a teacher come from God, and no one can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. And Jesus said to Nicodemus, except a man be born again. So salvation is a birth. You are born anew. The word anathem genoa. Mm -hmm. You are born anew. A birth. It's not like an item on the shelf. It's a birth where God's life fuses into you and brings you from death to life and becomes one with you. So you are one spirit with God. It's a birth. And when that happens, the Bible says, likewise, the spirit beareth witness with our spirit. There will be a witness of the spirit. There will be a conviction that leads to a transformation. It will be so obvious. It will be very difficult to fake it. If you fake it, it's just, it won't be too long. It will be obvious that you are just faking it. There's a power that will come into you. The Bible says in John 1, 12, as many as receive him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God. So there's, there's ability, there's power that will be unlocked in your heart. There will be, it will be very obvious. You will know it. And those who know you will know that something has happened. Even if the fruits are not yet obvious. It's just a matter of time. All the fruits will show forth. Hmm. With this understanding, you said once a person has salvation, he cannot lose it. Yes. Oedipo says salvation can be lost. And so did uh, Debo say. And I'm just looking at it with the physical mind and physical presence. You go to court. Uh, you are accused of an offense. The judge says you are acquitted and discharged. For the moment, you are. But if you were to commit a crime, that acquittal will not stand anymore. Is it different in, in God's law? Yeah, it's different. Because the death you are saved, you are saved forever. Yes, because, You're going to heaven. Yes, because the death of Christ is once and for all. In the book of Hebrews, he says, but this man, after he has suffered, you know, he, he, he obtained eternal salvation for us. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes shall not perish, but have everlasting life, eternal life. So what the believer receives is God's life. And it's a birth. Jesus will say to Nicodemus, 
except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god except a man be born of water and of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom he uses the word birth so when you are born you are born and nicodemus said to jesus how can a man be born again when he's old shall he go into his mother's womb the second time and be born jesus said are you a teacher of the jews and you're speaking like this that which is born of flesh is flesh and that which is born of spirit is spirit meaning once you are born a human being you can never go back to your mother's womb to come out an animal same thing once you are born of god a child of god you cannot unborn yourself you're born you're born irrespective of how you conduct irrespective. your life after the um irrespective after the, the irrespective but i say that irrespective cautiously because once you're born of god his nature takes hold of you yes you may have mistakes here and there but the difference is if you're not born again those mistakes you will enjoy them if you're born again you will know that you are in a territory you don't belong to you will not have pleasure in sin you will not even if you fall into sin you'll be sad because you know this environment is not my natural environment and you want to come out very quickly but if you fall into sin and you know that this is sin and you did it are you suggesting to us that because you are saved your cleansing uh, uh, power is faster and therefore you are cleansed of every sin you commit but that's what the bible teaches so once you are born again you will go to heaven irrespective of what happens well, afterwards once you're born again because you go to heaven not because you're a good person you are heaven bound because you believe in what christ has done nothing to do with what you how you conducted your life well how you conducted your life will be affected by what christ has done as you grow in that knowledge i don't understand that now so the day you receive jesus mm -hmm. jesus comes in you and jesus becomes one mm -hmm. but you have a mind that stored up memory of your past life now there's a battle between your past life and this new nature that is in your spirit so we start teaching you the word of god your mind the files the old files begins to get deleted by the knowledge of god's word and new files are stored into your memory so your life starts changing but there are some old files that have not yet gone so you find out that you are doing some things you used to do before not because that is your new destination but because of memory so as you keep receiving god's word the transformation is progressive that's what the bible in corinthians says but we all with open face beholding the glory of god as in a mirror are changed into that same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of god so the teaching of god's word begins to renew your mind to align with your new reality and as that reality begins to dawn on your consciousness your steps your lifestyle your speech your conduct begins to be affected by the new nature in you you may make mistakes here and there. So if you sleep, you know, it you will be cleansed. If you sleep, it will be cleansed. Because the, the Bible the says... The difference with the other guy who is not born again, when he sleeps, he has no redemption. He has no cleansing. Ah, I get it. That's why the book of 1 John chapter 2 says, My little children, these things write I unto you. He's talking to believers. That you not. But if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, mm. Jesus Christ, the righteous, who is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world john will put it like this again in first john chapter 1 verse 7 he says when you sin the blood of jesus his son cleanseth from all unrighteousness mm -hmm. the bible tells us in the book of ephesians he says that jesus may present to himself a church without spot or recall or any such thing which means you are jesus's responsibility you know uh, paul this is it the word salvation mm -hmm. is the greek word soteria that soteria is a greek word that comes from a culture now that word soteria comes from another word the sota the sota is like an emperor who goes to battle defeats his enemies takes over the territory lives in the territory to secure the territory so jesus is the sota of salvation mm -hmm. the sota of soteria when jesus comes in he conquers your entire life then he lives inside you to secure that territory he doesn't go anywhere he lives in there to secure that territory that's why jesus will say all that the father has given to me none is lost except the son of perdition which was judas iscariot that's why jesus will say in john 10 28 and 29 i give unto you eternal life and you shall never perish neither shall any man be able to pluck you out of my hand my father that gave you to me is able to keep you from falling so once a man is born again 
he is born into Christ Christ secures him it's like you have a house your house doesn't take care of itself your house doesn't paint itself your house doesn't sweep itself it is the owner of the house that sweeps the house it's the owner of the house that paints the house it is the owner of the house that sustains the house you are God's house you are the temple of the Holy Spirit so it is God's responsibility to clean you of every sin and every stain it is God's responsibility to keep you always clean and pure from sin and that is the job of the sotar in the in the saved he lives in you forever Two more questions on this segment and then we move on to another segment the argument in the garden of eden i'm asking this on the basis that we you said and other pastors also say that a man sinned and a man came for redemption this happened and that happened the adam and jesus they called jesus the second adam in the garden of eden in the account that we read the sin was shifted adam in his advocacy before god said that it is the woman who gave the thing to me if you read the narrative, the woman first encountered the deceiver. Why did God decide that the sin is the man's sin? So that if he's bringing redemption, he came through a man. Why didn't the redemption come through a woman? Well, remember, the book of Genesis has an after-event reportage. Because Moses wrote Genesis. Moses wasn't there when it happened. Which means two things were responsible. Number one, oral tradition. Number two, a vision. And the language of vision... Sometimes, oral tradition? Yes, oral tradition. Moses, Moses spoke to somebody? Yes, people, people who documented the events of Genesis. Oh, I sure. thought the inspiration of the Holy Spirit came upon Moses and he wrote everything. Well, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit comes on men not to give them the information, but to inspire them to write. And in I the see. writing, you collate materials. Look at the way uh, Brother Paul will put it in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. He says, And that from a child you have known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. The next verse. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Mm -hmm. Now, let me break the two words down. The first word in verse 15 says, From a child you have known the holy scriptures. The word holy scriptures is the word herios grammar in the Greek, in the Greek where it was originally written. Herios grammar means you have known the subject matter, you have known the, the content, you have known the letters of the scriptures. Then in verse 16, all scripture is the word pas graphe. Pas graphe means all the writings, the documentation is given by inspiration. So the inspiration of God is in the art of documenting. It's like I said, Mr. Paul, please help me get to government house. When you get to government house, every event you observe, document for me. And then you saw the driver of the president slap the driver of the, of the vice president. Now, I inspired you to document, but I did not inspire the driver of the president to slap the, the, the driver of the, deputy, of the vice president. But I inspired you to document. So the inspiration is in the documentation, not in the activities. Because it wasn't the Spirit of God that inspired Eve to sin against God. But the Spirit of God inspired Moses to document the So attack. why do we attribute the sin to Adam and not Eve? Well, again, like I said, it's an after-event reportage. Yes. So you will now come to the New Testament to truly understand what happened in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. The Old Testament is called mystery. The New Testament is called revelation. The word musterion in the Greek. Musterion means that which requires interpretation. The New Testament is called Revelation Apocalypsis. It means to unveil. So the New Testament unveils the Old Testament. All right. So what does the New Testament say about the event in Eden? Paul will say in Romans chapter 5 verse 12, Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered into the world. The word entered is the Greek word esekomai. It means a foreign object that did not exist was introduced into the world. So where was it introduced from? Jesus will give us answers to that. He says, know you not that it is not what goes into a man that defiles the man, but what comes out of a man. For from within the heart of man proceed evil thoughts. So the fall of Adam and Eve were thoughts in their mind that rejected God. But why Adam, not Eve? Well, both of them. So why did we say we bring in a second Adam, not a second Eve? Well, Adam was the head of the team. Okay. So he takes responsibility for everything that happens. So that's the lesson from there. That's the lesson. That the man, the husband. He takes responsibility for the running of the home. Were the Adam and Eve married? 
Adam and Eve. Were they married? They were married by, 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 the, by the fact that God brought the two of them together as the first man and woman to begin the human There was no race. ceremony. No, it ha doesn't have to be ceremony. Marriage doesn't have to have a ceremony because marriage is cultural, depending on what culture. If you belong to an African so culture... So we understand that marriage is cultural? It's cultural. But African marriage in the cultural context is polygamous. Well, that is why, again, in polygamy, as a child of God, the Bible does not tell you how to marry, where to marry. But the Bible teaches you how to live in marriage, how to function within the confines of marriage. And if the Word of God is going to teach you how to function within the confines of marriage, the Word of God does not submit to culture. Culture submits to the Word of God. So that is where that, that, that change comes. Once you get born again and you receive Christ, you now want to function within the confines of God's word as much as possible as you live within a culture. Has God's word prescribed monogamy as the proper style of marriage? Well, remember the last time we spoke about the patterns. Mm -hmm. God gave Moses Adam and Adam and Eve. And then look at the fathers. The fathers all through the scriptures. Abraham, you know, look at Isaac, look at David. And you jump take up. Look at Jacob. He got married twice. Yes, he got married twice. Again, but like I say, there are examples in scripture that you look at the wisdom of God and how it functioned. What was the outcome of those examples? And what was the downside of those examples? And as a wise person, you want to go with the pattern that produced peace and produce comfort and produce confidence. Abraham married only one. Yes. But there was no peace in his house. Well, there was no peace in his house because he walked by the he he produced a generation by the flesh which was contrary to the word of god because god gave abraham a promise i'm going to give you a child a miracle child and abraham was too impatient and abraham walked by the flesh and produced ishmael that was not god's choice god's choice was isaac was that a, a sin that was a sin but god blessed ishmael well god blessed ishmael because it was not ishmael's fault that he came did god punish abraham for that you can see the punishment till tomorrow. Which one? The Jews and the Palestinians. Is that it's correct information? Long, yes, it's been a long standing. Ishmael is, is the foundation of it's been the a Arab long, world. It's been a long standing battle from Genesis. How okay. do we know that? Uh, is, is there is an there anthropological the or, is there in or the archaeological is reason there? to say that Ishmael, after having been banished by Abraham, sent, the Bible describes in the geography, north wars, northeast, and then he settled there and became very prosperous. How do we say that that's the Arabs? Again, remember. Why is that not South African? Why is that not <laughs> again, Danish? Again, remember, the Bible has types and shadows that can be traced. In Galatians chapter 4, uh, Paul broke it down. That which was born after the flesh persecuted that which was born after the spirit, Correct. which is an allegory. Mm -hmm. Speaking of the flesh and of the spirit. Speaking of uh, Ishmael and Isaac which is what we have today in Israel and Palestine. How do we know it's Palestine? Israel has many enemies. Oh, they do. Yes, so they do. It, uh, but most of the Ishmael enemies, being their principal enemy could be anywhere. Yeah, most of their enemies are from outside, but Ishmael is from inside. So Paul said in Galatians that enemies from inside? Four. Chapter 4. He said that which was born after the flesh persecuted that which was born after the spirit, mm -hmm. which is an allegory. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then he talked about um, he talked about uh, the, the, you know, the plan of God, which was Abraham to wait for God to give him a child at the right time. But Abraham was not patient to wait. So he went after the flesh and produced Ishmael, which became a conflict between the two of them. And that conflict, the impact of it is still on. Because the flesh and the spirit is used very predominantly in scripture to teach works and the finished work of Christ. Mm -hmm. The spirit is the finished work of Christ. Ishmael is a type of man trying to qualify for God's acceptance. Isaac is what Christ has done qualifies a man who believes in Christ. So that's why it's an allegory in scripture that communicates a lot of spiritual realities. But there are physical lessons to learn from the event itself.
It's good to stay strong together. It's good to share nutritious meals cooked with Phytol, a vitamin A fortified oil. Phytol, you deserve a life of goodness. This advert is FDA approved. In today's modern world, stairs are a challenge, especially for our elderly and those with health concerns. Navigating them can be difficult and even dangerous, but there's a safer way to move vertically. Lifts and Elevators Limited Company, your answer to a more accessible and secure vertical transportation. Our elevators and escalators, including top-of-the-line pneumatic vacuum elevators, Fuji elevators and escalators, offer a safer and more convenient alternative, eliminating the risks of stairs and enhancing accessibility for homes, businesses and hospitals. Choose safety and convenience with lifts and elevators limited company. Elevate your spaces today. For more information, visit our website at www.elevatorsgh.org or call now on 0200-535-515. Lifts and elevators limited company, the elevator people. like how water refreshes you on a hot sunny day it takes a refreshing bath with a life soap to feel its pleasant fragrances leaving you with soft smooth and fresh looking skin you make me feel alive you really brighten my day day my day available in lemon coconut rose and aloe vera fragrance a life soap. Feel fresh, feel alive. The biggest car center in Ghana, offering unparalleled round the clock service in autos and accessories. Nadam Autofix is the biggest distributor of used ties in Ghana, offering first grade second hand car ties of all rim sizes at both wholesale and retail prices. We are also the leading name in car sensor diagnostics, corrections and sales of car accessories. We excel in car washing and detailing with state of the art steam engine washing machines that keep water away from your engine. Ensuring a clean, healthy, and responsive engine. Nadam Autofix, the first name in servicing, car accessories, and car washing. Visit us today and experience the world of class difference. Find us today at Asori Daho, directly opposite Dansoman KFC and the Shell Filling Station. For more details, you can call us on 0503 244 266 or 0535. 339823 Nano Motor Fix Wukwain Papa Okay, welcome back to the show. Uh, Dr. Damina. Yes. Uh, Ghana is in an election year. Last year, Nigeria was in an election year. If there is a pastor, and there are quite a few of them, who says that, by the grace of God, I have predicted every election in Nigeria correctly. I predicted that um, Shagari was going to win. He won. I predicted that Obasanjo was going to win. He won. I predicted that there would be a coup d'etat in Nigeria to be led by a guy called Mohammed Sani Abacha. It happened. I predicted good luck Jonathan, he won. I predicted Muhammad Buhari, he won. Even in Ghana, I predicted John Kufo, and he won, by the grace of God. Should we ignore that? Well, you know, uh, Mr. Paul, Christianity is apostolic and historic. Mm -hmm. So we want, to, we want to understand that Christian practice is based on what was handed down to us by Jesus, the head of the church, and the apostles of the Lamb. What they never did, we are not supposed to do. What they did was supposed to do. 
Jesus lived under a government in his time, but he never got involved with any form of predictions. And that's our master. He never spoke about anything politics. He was not even involved. He was never found at the corridors of power. But he was in that society. Doesn't he care about politics? Doesn't he care about government? Well, that's instructive. Apostle Paul, Peter, James, John, the foundational apostles lived in a time when they were under governments that were not even doing well. And they never said anything about it. The only time Paul had an opportunity to come to the corridors of power, he preached. And the, the king said, too much learning makes thou mad. You are beside yourself. You almost persuaded me to be a Christian. That's the much you will find. A Christian, a man of God that is truly a preacher of Christ, will follow the examples of those who have laid the foundation of the church. And not double into all of that. I have no problem with somebody predicting, just like a soothsayer can pre predict, a divine can God tell me the, the predict, Bible says God knows the beginning from the end, Alpha and Omega? Can He tell me who would win the elections in Nigeria next time if I pray to God that eternal God, please show me the way, show me the future? You said that you are the Alpha and the Omega, you said that the Holy Spirit has come to reveal all truths. Show me who is going to win this election. Is that a, a wrong prayer? No, it's it, He could show you. I mean, He could show you. Does He know? Day. Oh, he does. He knows the end from the beginning, beginning from the end. So he knows? He does. So he can tell you? He does. He can tell you. But like I've said, you must also realize that there's an apostolic foundation on which the church of Jesus operates, on which the church of Jesus functions. And we must not improve and innovate on that foundation. The Bible tells us in Corinthians, no other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Paul will say the church is built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets of the Lamb, Jesus himself being the cornerstone, which means Christianity is apostolic and historic. We stay within the confines of the traditions. And what I mean by traditions is the beliefs of scripture that we see practiced. So are you committing sin as a pastor? Are you out of line if you set out to conduct a two weeks fasting for God to tell you who is going to win Ghana's election? And that is why a lot of Nigerian prophets were messed up. By what? Predicting all kinds of stuff during the election that didn't happen a lot of them didn't happen didn't happen didn't even for, the, for those that it happened For those who predicted the Nigerian election so now that Bola was going to win and he won so now it becomes a gamble How is it a gamble? Somebody because says I pray to both God. of them prayed and fasted this one comes to say this this one This one comes to say is that one is one of them false prophet? Well the one whose prediction didn't happen the fact well the fact that somebody predicted the Bible says, if somebody says, thus says the Lord, and it doesn't come to pass, don't believe him. Don't take him serious. Forever. Don't fear him. Because he's a false prophet. No, he didn't say because he's a false prophet. What did he say? <laughs> he just left it like that. <laughs> so if you predict that... Um, I will not. That uh, if, if, if a pastor predicts okay. that uh, Peter Obi was going to win the election... Many of them did. They did. I, I heard it. I've seen videos. That Peter Obi was going to win the election. That God is bringing salvation to Nigeria. Uh, Peter Obi is going to win the election. But remember Jesus said, my government is not of this world. If my government were be of, to be of this world, I will bring angels down with his g politics. But is, he said God is interested in the affairs of men. What does the that mean? The affairs of men simply mean God has put a planet put everything in the planet for men to operate the planet. But he says he's interested. His interest there is because he loves you. And because he loves you, he makes sure that everything in the planet works for you. Yes, he wants That's everything in interest. the planet to work for me. He's interested in the affairs of men. Here is Nigeria's super eagles lined up against Ivory Coast elephants for the grand final of the African Cup of Nations. Yes. I'm Nigerian. Yes. I'm God person. Yes. God loves me. Yes. I go to the temple yes. and say, eternal father. Yes. This one, don't let them laugh at me. Yes, give Nigeria victory. Yes, and then I hear in my spirit, two one. Yes, then I call the radio station Akwaibo. Yes. listen. Yes, the Lord has spoken to me. Yes, Nigeria will win by two goals to one. They say, Who scored the goals? I don't know who scored the goals, yes. but we're winning two goals. To yes, one. two one comes, Nigeria has won. Yes, I'm a great prophet. Well, that's what you say, but it's not just one. Pro to know a prophet in scripture doesn't come by predictions. Mm -mm. A prophet in the word of God is known by his ability to take the holy scriptures and bring Christ out. Prophet? Yes. I thought he is speaking the future. No. What do the prophets do? To prophesy. Old Testament prophets spoke into the future concerning Christ. His death, his burial, his resurrection. In the book of Joel chapter 2, Joel took all that from the prophets and made it the collective responsibility of believers. 
I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh in the last days. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. It's no more the exclusive job of prophets to be seeing things. It now becomes our collective because the spirit of God now lives in the inside of so every the office of, of prophet has expired. So in the New Testament, the office of the prophet is different from the office of the prophet in the Old Testament. How do you know that? Oh, that's what the Bible teaches. In Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11, it says, He that ascended, descended, he gave gifts unto men, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastoring teachers. Why? For the perfecting of the saints. Absolutely. To do the work of ministry so that the body of Christ can be edified. Not for the prediction of football games, not for the prediction of politics, but for the perfecting, equipping believers to do the work of ministry so that the body of Christ can be edified, so that we are no longer tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine. And this was upon his resurrection. He laid down the blueprint of how the office of ministry ought to function in the body of Christ. And what the objectives, what the targets, what the responsibilities of this office of ministry is supposed to achieve. To raise a people for God that will preach the gospel, demonstrate the power of God, and be a blessing to humanity. That is the greatest agenda in the heart of God. Demonstrate the power of God. Yes. Is to show that as man limited by mortality yes i can tell you what will happen in december i'm demonstrating the power of no god. the demonstration of the power of god in this contest is the salvation of men i'm not ashamed of the gospel of christ it is the power so the preaching of the gospel to save you is the power of god the gospel is that power and the mission of that power is salvation yes the, the salvation but i'm showing you that to save a man the god that i'm asking you to submit to his salvation it's a God who is all-encompassing. Yes. He can even tell you who can win a football match. But, but in the scriptures, you won't see that. I That's what it. I'm saying. But why is that prophet you see not the, on the line of a New Testament prophet? Because, you see, if, the, if it was open-ended... Because they don't do that every day. Yes. If they do was, that when an event comes. If it was open-ended, then there would be a lot of malpractices. The word of God is the check and balance for the oppression of gifts... The operation of the spirit. If the spirit is leading you to do something that contradicts the word of God, it cannot be the spirit of God. If the prophet says, uh, I'll come to negative prophecy, but positive prophecy, he says that Nigerian Afrobeat musician Bernard Boy, 2027, is going to perform at Wembley Stadium. There will be some casualties, but that performance will make Bernard Boy the greatest Afrobeat of all time. At this time, Bernard Boy tells his friends that I will never perform at Wembley. And then they tell the pastor that you are crazy. You are totally crazy. Bernard Boy said he will never perform at Wembley. 2027, Bernard Boy performs at Wembley. There are casualties. He walks out with a big paycheck. He's being compared to Jay-Z. That's the prophet. How does that advance God's purpose on the earth? It grows the faith of the believers. Whose believers? The believers. Remember. Who, who heard it? Who heard the prophet of Jesus say something in the future? It looked like it's unlikely, but it happened. Remember, 40 years of miracles, Israel did not believe God. 40 what does that years mean? What does of miracles. Does it mean, therefore, that if miracles happen today, it doesn't build up the faith of the believers? Miracles alone are not enough. No, not, not only that, but it is that particular miracle will add to the faith of believers. That particular miracle will add to the faith of believers if it was within the confine of evangelism well he said it's in church so well said it in church how does it benefit the church born by boy is not part of that church yes but he's telling you that the law that you are serving, and that event the law that you are serving, and that event he knows today from that tomorrow. event is not to the glory of god which one that event that performance that concert is not to the glory of god because the lyrics of the songs in that con concert are not of glory to God. I'll come to the song. But the prophet who told the guy uh, with the food in Israel that tomorrow by this time, again, remember Old Testament. And that you will die. Remember the Old Testament prophets are different from the New Testament prophets. The New Testament prophets are said by God in the church. Give me an example of a New Testament prophet. Agabus. Yes. The one who predicted that Paul was going to be killed. Yes. That's Agabus. negative prophecy. Well, but Paul, Paul said, I am ready to die and I am ready to you know, I'm ready to go to those people and die. And but so Agabus Paul is a knew. prophecy yes. of Paul, the death of but Paul. Remember Paul again, it is as it relates to the mission of evangelism. 
That's why I'm telling you that even the operation of the gift of prophecy, which is from God, has to be with the, within the confines of the mission of God to save man from sin. But let's keep on Agabus. Agabus said, and I was going to go to pastors who predict somebody's going to die. This is now, going to happen. No, Agabus the said, point I'm making Paul is, is not going like to die. Believers cannot prophesy negative and, and prophesy death. Predict things. Mm-hmm. Even in the negative, even in the negative prophecy, it is so that caution can be taken, correction can be made, and salvation can occur. So negative prophecy is not in itself bad. No. Because the essence is to re- reveal so there can be redemption. Okay. In Ghana, every year 31st December, since the last five to four years, pastors turn up, and particular pastors are known for that, who give a prediction of the coming year. And they sometimes say that somebody's going to die. There's a law in Ghana in the books that says that a Ghanaian who is publish- publishing a document, like speech, should not publish something to occasion fear and panic. If you do that, you can be arrested by the police. The Inspector General of Police, over the last two years, will issue a statement on 31st December that any pastor who doesn't know and say somebody is going to die will catch him. Christians have been revolting against that command and authority from the police. That it is part of God's work. As you are saying, predicting somebody is going to die is not in itself bad. It is intended for caution. For prayer to come and these pastors will usually say that if we don't pray this guy will die is that a correct prophecy well again remember the spirit of god does not peddle fear correct because god has not but given why, the spirit yeah, of why fear. are we to be afraid of it it says if, if we don't pray this person will die well again you know even in the oppression of the gifts of the spirit in the bible there is wisdom there is wisdom in that oppression mm-hmm. you don't just speak things there's wisdom when god gives you a prophecy he gives you the wisdom of communicating it. So God can give you a prophecy of somebody who's going to die. And he will give you the wisdom on how to communicate it so it doesn't come with fear. The man that God sent the uh, angel to tell him that he was going to die so he should put his house in order. Well, again, remember, it, it, it was Eli- Isaiah who told Hezekiah. Mm-hmm. And Hezekiah said to God, God... But that's a, that's a prediction of death. Now, hold on. But Hezekiah said, God, you can't be in that prophecy. You can't be for my death. And God said, Isaiah, go back. I don't know what he did. Go no, back. Hezekiah went to plead. He didn't tell God that's, that. That's, he pleaded to God that, please give me more time. No, that's, that's in your own understanding. But in, what Bible, the say? in Bible understanding, uh-huh. Isaiah said, uh, Hezekiah said, I'm going, to, I'm going to appeal to God. I'm going to remind God that the grave cannot praise him. The dead cannot praise him. So in my death, he has no praise. But in my life, he has praise. And God says, since he's to praise... 15 more years is added to you. Yeah, so God added but 15 again, more remember, years. Remember, because God had told Isaiah to tell Hezekiah to die. But remember, that was with the Old Testament lenses. God does not kill. He couldn't have sent Isaiah to tell Hezekiah to die and change his mind. God does not repent. God is not. So Isaiah was not speaking. Isaiah like just prophesied. As a prophet will just prophesy. But and God Ezekiel, could have told Ezekiel that I don't know anything about it's it. Not you know Isaiah. It's I don't not, know anything about it. But God said, yes, I know about no, God it. God didn't say but yes. I've added 50, the the no. communication of adding 15 years. No, God didn't He's say He's adding 15 years to what? No, God didn't say yes. What was he adding 15 well, years Well, again, to? like I said, if you understand the character of God all through holistically, you know that God does not function like that. He doesn't kill. God doesn't kill. There's a scripture that says, I the Lord, I do all things. I create that no, grace, I create that. No, there's no scripture like that. Oh, it's, we, we, it's here. There is. Okay. Yeah, but, we'll find it for you. It says, yes. I the Lord, I do all things. I yes. create darkness, I create light. Yes, that's Isaiah. That's in Isaiah. That's Isaiah. That's Isaiah speaking. That's Isaiah about speaking. God. About God. It's not God himself it's talking. not God himself. So Isaiah was not telling us the truth. No, he wasn't. So we should ignore it. Yes. It's part of scripture. Well, it's not everything that is part of scripture that we take. It has to be interpreted in the light of but Isaiah is a great prophet. He's a great prophet. Why do you say he wasn't okay, speaking? Let the me truth? show you something else. Isaiah said that Jesus did not did not did not subscribe to. Mm-hmm. In Isaiah chapter 61, he says, To proclaim the acceptable year of, of the Lord, Lord yeah. the day of vengeance of our God. Mm-hmm. When Jesus recited it, he omitted vengeance. And he closed the book. But the Bible says vengeance is of the Lord. Well, the vengeance there in that Isaiah context is different from the one you're quoting right now. Well, but 
if you look because at Isaiah, in, in the Bible, if you cross over from Isaiah to Revelation 13, 14, yes. this vengeance appears to manifest in what the eternal God will come and do in Jerusalem. So that's what I'm saying. Vengeance in that context is different from vengeance in this other context. In the Bible, there's no omnibus application to any word. Each word is interpreted within its context. The word may sound alike. For example, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Friendship with the world is enmity with God. For God so loved the world. Love, love. Love not, he loves. So that the word world is used in different contexts. Different contexts. Yeah. It's For God so loved the world. Yes. But he says not love so not the world. So world is not world, mm -hmm. even though world is world. So vengeance is so different vengeance, vengeance is not vengeance, even though vengeance is vengeance, depending on the context. So you have to look at the pretext. You process. make salvation look simple, takes you to heaven, cleanse. But the biblical interpretations that you provide, Dr. Damina, is very complicated. Which one? Like this. The, the uh, context. Isaiah was not telling the truth. Single mention is not doctrine. You, you make it difficult for us to believe that we can be normal Christians and, uh, and uh, live our lives. But you make us feel that to understand the Bible is, is a long, shot away. Because now when I read the Bible, I have to call you. Yeah. Dr. Damien, I just read Isaiah. Is it true or not? Yeah, then you say it's true. That's, then where, that's where teaching comes. Remember, the Bible is an ancient world that was written in a culture with a different worldview, that was written in a different environment. So to interpret the Bible today, you must sit where they sat, hear what they had. That's too long. Then travel to our that's world too, today. But that's what the Holy Spirit has come. Well, the Holy Spirit has come yeah, through to bridge the gap. Through men. Yes. Through men. Through men. To, to bridge the gap. No, to interpret. But the Holy Spirit has come to all. No, it's it come to all men. That is what available to all men. It's available, but God gave you teachers. He appointed teachers to teach. He appointed pastors, evangelists. But you said the Spirit of the, the Lord scriptures. has fallen on all flesh falling on all flesh where it comes to the operation of gifts of the spirit or the gifts the gifts including the, the teaching prophecy teaching no. is not one of it no listen uh, teaching is part of it but before you teach you have to be taught you grow you learn then you are able to teach others paul will say to timothy the things you have heard of me among many witnesses the same commit to others so we teach you learn how to interpret scriptures Jesus himself had to interpret scriptures and he taught the disciples for 40 days. After 40 days, they took Jesus' pattern of interpretation and began to interpret in the book of Acts into the epistles. That is how God designed for his word to be interpreted. Nobody just takes the Bible and interprets. He has to be taught. That's why the word he expounded, the word daimonua, which means he interpreted the scriptures. Which means Moses did not speak in literal terms. Which means the prophets did not speak in literal terms. So Jesus had to interpret them into the world in which he lives, the vocabulary that was in existence at, at the time he lived, so that what was said then can be of relevance to the understanding of the people of today. Because the Bible is an ancient book that requires interpretation. So that's why you don't pick words of scripture, hook, line, and sinker. You have to calm down and interpret. Look at the context. Look at the world in which that word was used. For example, I use this example all the time. If I said on my way to Accra, it rained cat and dogs, and I wrote in a book, 100 years from now, cat and dogs may not be in use as language of communication. Somebody picks the book to read. On my way to Accra, it rained cat and dogs. In his understanding then, cat and dogs were falling from the sky. It will take somebody who was in this world to tell him, no, it was a form of communication back then. Cat and dogs mean it rained heavily. That's what happens with the Bible. Because the Bible was written many, many years ago. The language of use, the worldview, the culture, the grammar, the vocabulary was of that time. Today, you have to take that worldview, translate it into today's, and apply what was communicated. Is that not what, what you are saying that we should be doing? Is that not what the committee did? Constantine's committee. And it's in one of the notes that they gave me. I'm going to find it. Um, you said God doesn't kill, but it's here in Sodom and Gomorrah. He, he actually murdered everybody. Well, again, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah was a type of the end of the world. The day Lot left, it rained fire. Jesus said, as so it they, was, Is it a metaphor, Sodom and Gomorrah? Is it metaphorical or well, is it, it real? It was, it, it, it was real. It was real, but, but why but do you say it's a type of end time? A type and shadow. 
You know, the Old Testament is types and shadows. Mm -hmm. Prophecies and promises. So it is indicating to us how it will be in the end time. Like it was socially. People are going to die in that manner. People are going to be. Yeah. If they and Ananias reject, and Sapphira they got the killed. Gospel. And Ananias well, and, and, Ananias and Peter. Sapphira, Peter killed them. Yes. Yeah. God didn't kill them. God didn't Peter. kill them. Peter did. That's why later on, when Peter had grown spiritually, mm -hmm. the Simon, Simon the sorcerer mm -hmm. committed a worse offense than Ananias and Sapphira. He mm -hmm. didn't kill them. He just told them to repent of this evil in his heart. The scriptural issue that you're raising, which I think is confusing for those of us who are not full-time pastors or Bible No, you don't scholars. have to be full-time pastors the, to understand The Nicene Council, I don't know what I'm producing as well. Yes. They organize the books yes but they must have captured it in the language of today no they captured it in the language of that day that's where the original manuscript from where all translations come from mm -hmm. is the greek the yes Hebrew. but the king james people were did the work in 16 something yes the king james people yes. in the english of that time, yes they not in they, the english of today english has not changed significantly well but it's changing i mean you not don't significantly use, you don't use very really, very really. you don't use the very really is understandable today okay so it's not it's not so it's not complicated there's a lot you don't use that in today's english it's allowed no but it's yes, allowed but in today's it. english the understanding will will be will almost not be no very very really simple very very really means very but again remember the english of that day when the bible was translated from the greek and the hebrew to the english of that day mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. the vocabulary the vocabulary available at that time was not as robust as it is right now i agree so that is why in today's english but when but the context in, won't change significantly the context won't ch it will change very significantly mary was for example let me, let me give you an example mm -hmm. study to show yourself approved unto god yes okay I've that word it. study is not study it's what in the greek is be diligent same well diligent study be similar di it's similar mm -hmm. but if you don't have that understanding you but diligent that. means what? Diligent to show yourself approved unto God. Yeah, diligent that is what? Give yourself diligent, diligent in the context of that discourse. Hmm. There's a discourse that was going on, and then he brought in diligence yeah. in Second Timothy chapter two. Paul was addressing a minister of the gospel by the name of Timothy, and he was telling him to be diligent in the pursuit of his assignment. And part of that diligence is in how he handles the scriptures. That the scriptures must be rightly divided. The word ototomio. Ototomio means when you take the scriptures, you cut through the scriptures to arrive at the truth. Just like a medical doctor will carry out a caesarean section with expertise in making sure he does not cut the good parts and in making sure he does not leave part of the bad part. He must be skilled. Just like the miners will go into the rocks and mine precious stones. They must be skilled so they don't wound the precious stone and reduce its value. And so they don't leave part of the precious stone. There's skill required. So that kind of expertise that the doctor and the, law and the, and the, the miner will use is the kind of expertise a man of God must use in handling the, the Bible. Because you have to cut through to arrive at the truth. Should Christians be concerned about certain books in the Bible that have not been um, certain books in the Bible that have not been uh, mentioned or read? The sixty-six canonical books, uh, for instance, the book of um, Enoch, Jasher, etc. Sometimes when we're in school, they used to talk about the six and seven books of Moses. Should and we be concerned that our Bible is not complete? That no, it was the Roman Empire that decided that we should have this? No, Bible? We, sh we shouldn't. The early founding fathers of the church came up with the canonization of scripture. And the reason was because there were many books written by the early fathers. The books were too many. You can't even count them. And so the early founding fathers decided, what, what should we have that is going to be our book or the book that reveals God to us? So they came up with, a, a, you know, um, it came up with requirements. Number one, it must have divine origin. Number two, it must have a consistent message. Number two, it must be tied together by one revelation. Mm -hmm. So they began to take the books through canon. Did we leave some out? All the other ones that didn't pass that test were left out. So was that test a righteous test? It was a righteous test. Was it spiritual or was so it administrative? It was both spiritual, administrative, intellectual. But, That's why but this is the Roman Empire doing it. Yes. What kind of spiritual... No, the founding fathers of the Christian of faith. The, the, yes. The apostolic fathers? Yes. They did it? Yes. Who were they? They put together the material that the Nicene Council looked into all of them and, and saw the apostolic books 
and other books that are consistent together that has one common message and they found it was only 66 out of all the thousands of books and they canonize it and that's what we have as a bible and when you look at the bible it is tied together with one message one character. where's the six and seven books of moses well uh, i have not bothered to look at it because i still have this 66 to to contend with and to understand could it be relevant to though well or should we not should we where satisfy not where salvation is should possible. we should we gratify ourselves in the fact that jesus christ said whatever it is the holy spirit will reveal to you no, so we don't need to worry about whether there's a book or there's no book the holy spirit will reveal to us no, there, all truths no there's a closure to the revelation and that closure is what the apostles of the lamb taught and where it ended that you said clear. salvation uh works in eternity yes if a pastor who's obviously been saved has led people to salvation confesses that he's lgbt would he go to hell again like we said the last time we had an interview here lgbt people are not bad people they are just people suffering from identity crisis identity crisis identity crisis they are not sure no. of who they are ah, okay so how do you come into uh knowing is it a who sin? You are? yes it's a sin to suffer from identity crisis yes it's a sin why sin against who well it's a sin against yourself and it will lead to sinning against god Oh understand. yes, the Bible but identity us, crisis the Bible can manifest us, itself the Bible in different us, different ways. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans chapter one mm -hmm. that men left the natural use of their bodies. Okay, that's a sin, mm -hmm. and God gave them up to do things that are not convenient. That's yes, a sin. That is offending and the first, law of nature. And, and in First Timothy, mm -hmm. the Bible listed sins and homosexuality is part of it. But these sins are not; they are not sins that lead you to hell. Mm -hmm. But do they understand? lead you to? There are sins that, you know, keep you out of the will of God for your life. But that you can go to heaven. That open the door for Satan to deal with you. Okay, but you can go to if heaven. If you believe in Jesus, his death, his burial, his resurrection, you are in heaven. So you're a pastor, you believe in Jesus, his death, his burial, his resurrection. You turn LGBT, your uh, uh, gay partner is one of your pastors. Both of you will go to heaven. But remember, a man of God cannot be a novice. So a man in identity crisis is not fit to pastor a church. A man of God must be matured, must be given to the word of God, and the word of I God must that. be So you can be mind. asked not to pastor the church. Will he go to heaven? Oh yeah, if, he's, if he believes in Jesus and is gay, he will go to heaven. Gays will go to heaven? Oh sure, why not? Gay? Yes. LGBT? Yes. Lesbian? If they transgender? Jesus, who did Jesus die for? Sinners. When did Jesus die? 2,000 while we years ago. Yet, while we were yet? While we were yet sinners. So our sins, that, while we were yet sinners, so, Christ died for So us. our sins did not stop his death. And the point you're making is that the LGBT sin is the same as me lying. Yes, exactly. The sin same as sin. where God is concerned. Yeah. Sin is sin. So lie, if, if, my, if, if I lie and I cheat as a politician, yes. I occasion rigging elections, I am boat. the same category With as LGBT. LGBT. All of you are together. But we all make it to heaven. No, you make it to heaven only if you believe in Jesus. I mean that. We are, we are now, born again. Now, but when you believe in Jesus also, a transformation begins to happen. And I will probably stop the LGBT at it some will, point. Yes, you will. But I may not. You may and not. And die with it. You may not. You die with it. Cheated. You go cheated, to heaven. You are marginalized. Yes, you go to heaven, but marginalized. But the we, kind we, of victory we have, been, we have been told so much about the disaster of hell that any part of heaven is good for anyone <laughs> so if you say this the boys at the back are going to say hooray pastor damina says we are good to go no they are not going to say if they really have the spirit of god you see the the, the, the beauty of this thing is anyone that is truly born of god mm -hmm. and he hears a message like this he doesn't see it as an opportunity to go and continue sinning he sees it as god's love for me is too much mm -hmm. i cannot continue to make god unhappy bishop td jakes has denied allegations that he may be LGBT. But he says, even if it is true, he has sinned against only God. Everyone should shut up. Is he right? Well, you know, when it comes to that, because I don't have all the facts, it's very difficult for me to comment. But this statement of, facts. and it was made in the Bible, I think it was David also, that if I've sinned, I've sinned against only God. Everyone clear off. Well, you know, you know um, David said that after he killed Uriah in the Old Testament, in Psalm 51. Mm -hmm against thee and thee only have i sinned but that is the truth actually man's sin is basically against god because it is only god that forgives sin. so david was right david was right. td jakes is right he's right hmm. only god 
Talk of David, let me just digress a little bit and come, yeah. to, come back to you with another uh, boyhood argument we used to have. David was told by God that he cannot build a temple because this is his blood on his hands. Okay. In the scripture union in those days, there was a big argument about why did God deny David the construction of the temple? Was it the immorality uh, of taking somebody's wife? Or was it the murder of Uriah? Or was it both? Well, again, you remember, the Bible clearly says it because there's blood in your hand. So it's the murder of Uriah? Both that. It's not the sexual immorality? No. The blood. Hmm. Many people will not like to hear you say that. Well, that's anyway, what the Bible says. I'd like to go to the video where we'll show you some of the things that uh, you have said. Okay. And then uh, we will get some explanations from you. But let me ask you, many Nigerians are not happy with you, Dr. Damina, because the example I already mentioned... In that, uh, on that Sunday afternoon at the um, Alassani Watara Stadium, you refused to say a prayer for the Super Eagles. Even when they took the lead, you didn't say any prayer for them, and they lost the game. You are in Nigeria. Well, how did they know I didn't pray? That's what they are telling me, that if you are so powerful that if you had prayed after the first goal, Nigeria would have won. If the Super Eagles had done their homework well, they would have won. <laughs> really? Yes. They didn't do their homework well. Yeah, they didn't do their homework well. Yeah. Because Philippe foot, George would not like football, to hear that. He's a, football, he's a new coach of Nigeria. Politics is all competition amongst men. So give it your best shot. Do your training well. Do all you need to do well. Get in there and, and, and play your best. And if you win, good. If you don't win, yeah. is it a sin to steal elections? Well, again, it depends on what steal is. To to change the figures and make somebody win. You know, I used to have somebody um who was in um, the American government, a man of God. And he came to Nigeria and he said to me, Dr. Damina, you know, you guys in Nigeria, everybody says you're corrupt, you're corrupt, you're corrupt. Meanwhile, what some of you guys do in Nigeria that we call corrupt is exactly the same things we do in America. It's Absolutely. just that ours has constitutional backing. So why don't you guys back up yours with constitution so that it is no more corruption? The stealing of the election. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that a bit later. Who's the best uh, final one for this segment before we go to the videos? Who, who, is the, who is the best pastor in Nigeria? The best man of God. You have so many great men. You have Dr. Damina, you have... Uh, I, I don't know who is the... Depo, you I don't have know who, I don't know who is the... Boye, you have uh, uh, Chris Oyakilomi, who is one of my says, favorites. Judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who shall bring to light the motives of men's hearts, and thereafter shall every man have praise of God. So we should wait it's for we now. should wait for Jesus to descend it's to true. Jerusalem, we should and wait He will for, tell us for the coming of Christ at the bema seat, the great white throne. I mean, the the judgment seat of Christ. We will know there then who is the great man. It's Christ. only then, far away. Only then, seven thousand years from now. Only then, because what you call great today, the motives could be wrong, and there'll be no reward. What you but didn't the Bible say by their fruits we shall know them? No, 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 no. Their fruits you shall know them, it's different in that context mm -hmm. from what we're talking about right now. We're talking about who is the great man of God. Yes. Okay, so the Bible says, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes. Okay, let's talk about somebody who has passed. Benson Idahosa. He was a powerful prophet who could predict people could die. He could kill witches. Babangida was afraid of him. Was that correct? Well... He could predict big Again, time. Let, let's talk of somebody else who has died. Ryan Hardbonke mm -hmm. packed the best stadiums in Africa, mm -hmm. shook the whole world with his crusades. Before he passed, he said, you know what? I'm not going to attribute the success of my ministry to myself. Mm -hmm. You see Ryan Hardbonke, but there are intercessors, people who prayed and fasted. There are people who did a lot of groundwork. I only just come to preach. And then he said, I'm sure when I see Jesus, some of these people have more reward than myself. Mm -hmm. So again, judge nothing before the time. Until that day when we see Jesus and he brings all our works to the fire and the fire tests everybody's works, then we shall now know who is the great man of God on that day. But before then, we keep laboring. We keep working faithfully and trusting God. If there's a believer who changes churches, in two years he has gone to six churches, is he the problem or the churches are the problem? He is in search of something he is yet to find. Mm -hmm. When he finds, he will settle down. Really? Yeah. La last one again. He's a believer. Yeah. When he finds it, he will settle Recently, down. there's been a phenomenon uh, on social media where pastors are leading prayer sessions on the phone in the night and in the morning. It's a very big one in Nigeria, which is followed by people in Ghana. Sometimes, 
1.5 million people are tuned in to listen to a pastor they can't see and he's just leading them in prayer using scriptures the prayers that are most popular if you look at the way in which the social media goes up the prayers that are most popular are the one that you pray fire will burn you let the fire burn your enemies and then they all go ta 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 the fire burns their enemies in Ghana, we had a similar phenomenon. It used to be called Mopa. Still called Mopa, it's old. It's a new one called Alpha R. Some of the ministers of the gospel were concerned about this phenomenon. Yep. I spoke to one of them, and he led me to a scripture. Uh, it was a scripture that I believe Gamaliel was telling the, uh, the council mm -hmm. about Peter and Co. If it be of God. Yeah, if it be of God, it will remain. Is that the simple answer? And I, I told the pastor, this is just too simple. He said he well, has nothing to say. If well, again, of God, it will last. Again, like I have said, Christianity is apostolic mm -hmm. and historic. Mm -hmm. What the apostles never did, we're not supposed to do. I never saw any apostle in the scripture who did that pattern of ministry. No, but Mobile. there was no mobile phone at that time. Dr. Well, Dabina. again, there was no mobile phone. Yeah, it's a communication. But there could have been other forms of doing that communication. The Bible teaches... Was there an apostle who was on TV? You were on TV, Dr. Damien. There was no, but again, like I've said, <laughs> it's apostolic and historic. Yes. So we have to abide by apostolic practices. God wants the believer to develop a relationship with him that is independent of anybody helping him. God wants you to know him by yourself, for yourself. This yeah, but that's what they are doing. They are leading people to God. That's what they are doing, right? Yeah. Okay. Because the technology is new now. Yes. You're on TV. But Apostle Peter was never on TV. Yes. Uh, so if you're saying we should do what the apostles did, you shouldn't be on TV. Well, again, remember... I'm on TV to teach God's word. Yes, they are on the if radio the apostles, to help people if the pray. Apostles, if the apostles were alive, they will be on TV to teach God's word. If because the apostles were alive, they will they hold went. a mobile phone, rally in the night when teaching. people can go on. And I'm teaching the word on mobile phones. No, they are leading them in prayer. Well, again, the Bible tells us in the book of, uh, of, of Ephesians, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, Absolutely. but against principalities and powers. Correct. Okay? So a believer is supposed to develop a personal prayer life on his own. Mm -hmm. A personal prayer life but if i'm not able to develop a personal prayer life why wouldn't and you? i know that every midnight alpha hour will be on from midnight to two and that becomes my foundation to build my prayer life what's wrong with that the point i'm making is beyond that mm -hmm. a believer ought to have a personal prayer life that is built on serving christ secondly a believer's prayer is not supposed to be self-centered it's supposed to be christ and the kingdom centered Look at all the prayers. Suffered out a wish to live. Now, look at all the prayers in the New Testament. There was no such prayer. But they suffered out a wish to live. That's a personal prayer. Well, you that was in with the, the witches in your family. That was in the Old Testament. There, I get confused again and when you say Old Testament. Scripture. So a single it has doctrine. no corroboration anywhere. Suffer not a wish to live. It has no corroboration anywhere. So is what? We it's should not ignore it. Yes. We should ignore it. Yes. And let the witches live. Who did Jesus die for? Enemies. Yes, in sins. Christ died when you were enemies. But it says if you, if you prayed on your enemies, it's like you're heaping coals of fire on their head. Yeah, but so so pray and bless them. So that you heap coals of fire on their head. If the church had prayed for Paul to die when he was wasting the church, you will not have half of your New Testament today. Why would the church pray for Paul to die? Just like they're praying for people to die today. But Paul was with the church. That was, oh, you mean when he was persecuting he was, the church? Yes. yes, but they prayed for him to die. They certainly that did. That was an act of which No, there's no such record that they But prayed Peter for was him to refusing die. to help Paul, even when the Lord told him, go and deal with that man. Peter yeah, was Yeah, he was refusing. afraid. He didn't want to be killed. He was angry. No, no, he was afraid. He was angry that the, the great love if of you, Jesus is being extended to this rogue. But if you read, you see what Ananias, when Ananias was asked to pray, he said, Lord, do you know the kind of havoc this guy is causing and you're sending him to that guy? He kills people. And Jesus said, go thy way. He said, chosen vessel to bear my name. And Ananias went with that encouragement. They were just afraid of him because he knew he was killing everywhere. But he was blind. He was blind just for, that was not just. At the time Jesus told them to go, that he was, was blind. That was not permanent blindness. I, I know, but uh -huh. at the time Jesus said, go to Paul, he was blind. And then Ananias prayed for him and he received his sight. Yeah, so I'm suggesting that, to you that they were not afraid anymore. They were angry. No, that was a miracle. They were yeah, was angry miracle. in one sense, but that anger didn't stop them from extending what God has instructed them to carry out to him. I remember with enemies, Jesus said, pray for your enemies. Bless those that curse you, that you may be like your father, which is in heaven. Which means your father in heaven's wish for everybody who hates you is for you to pray for them, for you to desire for them to be saved. 
The will of God is for all men to be saved. Witches, non-witches, wicked, non-wicked. That's God's purpose. That's why Jesus died. And the church must be seen agreeing with God to believe God for the salvation of all men. If I come to work one evening and this is my chair, I come and they've poured black powder on it. And I take my phone and I call my pastor. So, so for, there's black powder. I said, put your right hand there. Take a bit of water. Let's start. Whatever. Anybody who has done they return to sender. Return to sender. We're going to kill them. If they want to kill four of us, they will kill thousands of four by my right hand. Ten thousand shall fall. Only with my eyes will I be holding. We're praying. Is that correct? Well, the believer ought to know his authority. Mm -hmm. And know that all those things, you trample over them. And mm -hmm. they shall not hurt you. So when I see that, should I call the pastor or not? No need. Why should you call the pastor? What should I do? I should sit on it? When you are taught, you just clean it. <laughs> sit on it. Clean off and sit there. But if I sit there and I start feeling it in my back, it's a, it's a kind of thing. No, you won't, my feel, head. you won't feel because if you know your authority and you know that Jesus destroyed principalities and powers and he made a public show of you and triumph over them, if you know that, you will not be afraid of any of such things. Satan is the least thing to worry about. Hmm. Okay, interesting. Let's get to the videos and then uh, and see what we got. Uh, it's time to take another break and uh, we'll come back shortly. Dr. Damina, when we come back, is going to uh, go on the. Uh, we'll show him some videos of what he has said and then he will respond to it. We'll be right back. We are back, bringing you the latest lineup from Betway. Betway starts strong with your front two, with free play Friday and swipe bet. In the middle, you've got all the control, with cash out and build a bet. Plus, with win boost, you can boost your sports bet. At the back, they have smart picks and the partial daily jackpot. You always get way more with Betway. And you want to see. Subscribers have been vetted and approved by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. Bet responsibly. No under 18. Terms and conditions apply. Betway. Get way more. Customer, customer. Ah, not a man. I mean, I'm a trap. 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 I'm a Tangana cities, you know. Media. Maybe uh, uh, 54,000 Ghana cities. 54,000? 540 million. Yeah. 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 One of our daily lucky winners. Dial star nine four six hash to play now. Or you can also play online at www.gameparkgames.com. Game Park is regulated by the National Lottery Authority. Anti cavity, dam protection. Brighter tea and fresh bread. I'm off at Missy Way. Prepatch your bantam. Much as it. That's a cycle. It's her smile. The fresh bread. Me, GD said we use a Kel 360 toothpaste. Some me kind. Kel 360 toothpaste. Yes, Kia. Kel 360 toothpaste. It's a gum protector. Oh, Nim Jung Kazan Kazan Kazan. Kill a horse. It's cool, man. Gives me fresh breath and your confidence booster. Hey, you, so so you can win in a year. 360 toothpaste. Happy smile. 360 toothpaste. Anti cavity, gum protection, brighter teeth, and fresh breath. Kill. Happy smile. This other is FDA approved. Ready for another awesome encounter at Harvest Praise 2024, the Anapau edition. Join friends and family to praise and worship with anointed ministers, Alvin Slaughter. Phil Thompson. Harvest Gospel Choir. 
And the Harvest Theatre. Harvest Praise is on Good Friday, 29th March 2024 at the First Laugh Center near Trinity Seminary, Lagos. Time, 4 p.m. sharp. Dial star 725 star 1155 hash on all networks and buy your tickets now. Single, 80 Ghana CDs. Double, 140 Ghana CDs. And VIP, 150 Ghana CDs. Tickets are also available at Bachelor Total, Sunny FM, and all Harvest Chapel branches in Accra. Come find rest as you praise your birthings away. Harvest praise, get your praise on. Okay, thank you. Welcome back, uh, Dr. Damina. Let's watch this video of you. Uh, can you play the video now? Let's, let's, let's watch it. Dr. Damina said it was not God that answered the prayer of Elijah. Yes, it was not. The two fires in Elijah story are not the same. The fire of Mount Camel is from God because that fire was a miracle. That is different from this one. This one came to consume human beings. That fire that consumed people was Elijah opened the door to spirits. Now it is left for you to choose whether you believe Jesus or Elijah. The problem is many Nigerians who are Christians do not have faith in Jesus. If I go to church where people are not taught to love, all the emphasis is fall and die, judgment, be roasted, be roasted, be roasted. Touch me by mistake, die by correction. If I be a man of God, Dr. Damina said it was not God that answered the prayer of Elijah. Yes, it was not. I repeat, it was not. The problem is many Nigerians who are Christians do not have faith in Jesus. They do not believe that Jesus is God. They see Jesus as the same with Elijah and Moses. So Elijah, if he says something, Jesus cannot correct it because they are age mates. Many Nigerians do not understand that Jesus is the Lord and Savior of Elijah. The absence of God's presence is destruction. Just like if you remove light, what happens? Darkness. If you remove life, what happens? Death. So God does not kill. Death is the absence of God. God does not destroy. Destruction is the absence of God. As long as God is there, there can be no destruction. Nobody can destroy in the presence of God. There is only one thing in the presence of God. It's fullness of joy. <laughs> That's controversial. Elijah prayed as we are told and the children died. You said Elijah prayed to evil spirits? Second Kings chapter 1. The Bible tells us, Elijah said, if I be a man of God, let fire come. And fire destroyed 250 people. Mm -hmm. In the book of Luke chapter 9, Jesus was to go through Samaria. Mm -hmm. And the Samarians refused him coming through their city. And his disciples said to Jesus, shall we command fire to come down and destroy these people as Elijah did? And Jesus turned down, rebuked them. Mm -hmm. And told them, you know not what manner of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another city. Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he refused them bringing the fire of Elijah down in the book of Luke, if he was standing by where Elijah spoke, he would have rebuked Elijah. Yeah, but Jesus is a mediator. He is the savior. He cannot do what Elijah did. It doesn't mean Elijah's uh, command did not come from God. No, he didn't. God never sends fire to destroy people. Yeah, but God punished Adam. The punishment of Adam mm -hmm. was spiritual separation. God punished Cain. Spiritual separation. What's that? Remember, spiritual separation means not extinction. They rejected the gospel. They said no to God. God can't force himself to them. So he gave them up to what they wanted. He gave them up to what they wanted. So who killed the Adam children for Elijah? Because Elijah didn't kill them himself. That's why Jesus said, you know not what manner of spirit 
you are off that means there are spirits bible says neither give room to the devil when with your pronouncements people believe in you and you open the door for satan he comes in to destroy them evil spirits can obey the word of elijah oh sure why not that's why you don't give room to the devil you give room to the devil with words that's why the bible says say not in your heart there are things you don't say the righteousness of faith speaketh on this wise so as a man of god the members in your congregation are under your spiritual authority you are the doorkeeper to that congregation you can open the door for evil spirits to come in and carry out havoc and if you do that you're not fulfilling the ministry of jesus christ remember did god punish elijah for that no he didn't we he didn't. rewarded him actually elijah didn't see death reward how elijah died oh it's, it's elisha that didn't see death all of them died enoch didn't see death enoch died but we are told that a chariot took him to heaven in the old testament uh -huh. it was a type of death it was a type of death because hebrews chapter 11, elijah died yes hebrews chapter 11 what did he say the bible tells us in hebrews chapter 11, now faith is the substance of things so far the evidence of things not seen for by it the elders obtain good report mm -hmm. through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of god mm -hmm. that the things that do appear were made of things that do not appear by faith enoch was translated that he should not see death mm -hmm. that's verse 4. Mm -hmm. then in verse 13 he now said this all died i don't understand enoch did not see death enoch died this all of them died not having received the promise but they looked forward to the promise so what was so, the type of death that Enoch died? Is it like the death that people die today? It was just a type of death. That, well, how does that, it manifest? People well, die Bible today says, by life, becoming a lifeless the body. The Bible says he was not. He was not. God took him. But yes. Hebrews tells us he died. Elijah, so when they say God took him, how should we understand it? Well, that's death. His spirit went to God. His body went to the earth. But it says by faith he did not see death. By faith he did not see death. That's what the Old Testament says but hebrews interpreting remember the new testament interprets the old testament in the interpretation of it revelation tells us that this all died that is why they were waiting for jesus to rise from the dead nobody went to heaven till jesus came and died and rose john chapter 3 verse 13 he says no man has ascended up to heaven but the son of man which came down from heaven so nobody went to heaven before jesus rose from the dead all of them died and they were buried and kept in paradise in the underworld awaiting the resurrection of jesus which opens man's access into heaven hmm. that's very complicated i'm sure no, it's, very, it's very simple. so this video we showed of you right now yes uh, you said people shouldn't pray for people to die yes that's not love the gospel is the love of god god loved but why doesn't god punish the people who do that like Elijah. because there's a day of punishment coming that day has not yet come today virtual tv insightful and inspiring moments has christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you oh hallelujah Christianity is not a religion, neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa! This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous, keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah. This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess Him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Join Dr. David Binder on the Good Life Devotion every Monday to Friday on this channel and receive truth that will usher you into exhibiting the divine life. Kindly note that you can enjoy the Good Life Devotion on these other platforms at their stated times. Do choose the most convenient one for you or switch to another in case of a broadcast challenge with your usual platform. By all means, don't miss the Good Life Devotion any day. Now, 
Welcome to today's episode with Dr. David Bindon. Wow, praise 